Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about building data centers in Earth orbit or even on the Moon. This is a subject that's starting to receive quite a bit of attention with early pioneers now taking their first steps. Several companies are also developing the required launch capabilities as well as the necessary orbital connectivity. Research and markets even predict that the orbital data center market will be worth $1.77 billion in 2029 and $39.9 billion by 2035. So, let's go and take a closer look. There are several potential reasons to build data centers in space. For a start, in-orbit data storage and processing will facilitate space-based edge computing. This means that raw data collected by satellites will be able to remain in orbit, with only AI or other analysis transmitted to the Earth. So, for example, weather forecasts rather than satellite images could be received from orbit, so decreasing the latency of the delivery of useful information. Secondly, orbital data storage may increase resilience and security. The 321 rule tells us to keep at least three copies of all data on at least two different types of media with one copy off site. But 4211 could add an off planet copy, giving critical data even more protection against natural disasters. And highly sensitive data may potentially be more isolated from cyber attack. Perhaps most significantly, by utilising space-based solar power, orbital data centres could help to meet our demand for increasingly energy-intensive AI compute facilities. Many fear that there will soon be an electricity supply crunch. And indeed, Elon Musk has predicted that global electricity generation will need to triple by 2045. This is due to the electrification of transport, industrial processes and heating, in addition to future data centre requirements. A 2024 white paper from the Electric Power Research Institute noted that AI models are typically much more energy intensive than the data retrieval, streaming and communications applications that have driven previous data centre growth. And, due to this, by 2030, data centres could be using up to 9.1% of US electricity generation compared to 4% today. In 2024, an EU-funded study by Thales Alina Space reported on the feasibility of space-based data centres. The results validated the technical practicalities and confirmed that their deployment could offer a more eco-friendly and sovereign solution for hosting and processing data. Space data centres would not require water to cool them, so reducing the demand on many already challenged supplies. Their solar panels would also generate electricity far more efficiently than those on the ground, as they could receive sunlight almost 24-7, as well as being immune to cloud cover, the changing seasons and atmospheric haze. Back in 1973, American engineer Peter Glazer obtained a patent for solar power satellites that would transmit power down to the Earth. However, a key challenge for solar power satellites would be power loss in energy transmission. In contrast, space-based data centres would use the power they generated in orbit, with data being the only commodity to be returned to the planet below. In addition to providing orbital edge computing, data resilience and freedom from electricity supply constraints, off-world data centres could have other advantages. For a start, as deep space is cold, they should be able to benefit from natural cooling. And they could potentially be scaled to gigawatt capacities far more easily than Earth-based facilities. In addition, they could provide compute capacity for space stations and other off-world infrastructure. And finally, they may be able to operate outside of any country's legal jurisdiction, which may be an advantage or disadvantage depending on your point of view. Whilst the idea of building orbital data centres may sound prohibitively expensive, 
the reusable rockets and orbital connectivity to make them cost-effective are being developed. Today, a SpaceX Falcon 9 has a launch cost of about $62 million to deliver 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit, which is $2,720 per kilogram. However, partially or fully reusable heavy lift launchers, such as SpaceX's Super Heavy Starship, may bring costs down to $20 per kilogram in the long term. Turning to orbital connectivity, several companies are now building satellite constellations that will allow space-based data centers to connect to both Earth ground stations and other orbital infrastructure. Not least, SpaceX continues to launch Starlink. This delivers high-speed, low-latency internet, with over 7,000 satellites already operational in low Earth orbit. Starlink satellites are also interconnected, with lasers transmitting over 42 million gigabytes of data across the constellation every day. So, a vast orbital network that could be used by space-based data centers already exists. In competition, Amazon has plans for a constellation of over 3,000 satellites called Project Kuiper. Whilst delays have been experienced, in April 2025, an Atlas V rocket successfully launched the first 27 Kuiper satellites. And 80 future launches have been booked. Another market player is Kepler, who already operate a constellation of 27 satellites that act as internet exchange points for space-to-space -space data communications. And in April 2025, Kepler announced that in the last quarter of 2025, it will launch a first tranche of additional data relay satellites, nine operational plus one spare, and that these will offer an in-orbit compute facility. As Kepler explains, this will allow customers to lease or purchase computing hardware on board Kepler's optical data relay satellites, enabling advanced on-orbit computing capabilities to support advanced processing, data storage, cloud compute, and artificial intelligence. Several organizations are now developing space-based data centers. One of these is Axiom Space, who in April 2022 collaborated with Amazon Web Services and others to install an AWS snow cone on the International Space Station. An AWS snow cone is a 9x6x3 inch edge computing, edge storage and data transfer device, and the one on the ISS has been used for demonstrations of space-based data processing. In April 2025, Axiom announced that its first two ODC, or Orbital Data Center nodes, will be launched by the end of the year. These will be part of the Kepler network development I just mentioned, with Axiom having entered into a strategic collaboration with Kepler to purchase two on-orbit computing payloads for its Orbital Data Center business. Axiom's wider plans include the construction of Axiom Station, the world's first commercial space station. In turn, this may lead to other orbital data center possibilities and capabilities. And so, Axiom Space is very much a space-based data center pioneer to watch. Another potentially very significant player is StarCloud. Previously known as Lumen Orbit, the company has the long-term objective of building vast orbital AI training clusters that will be able to keep pace with AI development. In July 2025, StarCloud is due to launch a 60 kilogram demonstrator satellite called StarCloud-1. This is equipped with data center grade NVIDIA GPUs and, according to StarCloud, will be running 100 times more powerful GPU compute than has ever been operated in space. And, if all goes to plan, a commercial orbital data center satellite called StarCloud 2 will launch in 2027. Looking further ahead, StarCloud has released a white paper that contains a wealth of data and calculations in support of its vision for large-scale space-based data centers. These it hopes to construct from independent modules, each of which would include its own server racks, 
docking port and network switches along with its own liquid cooling and power distribution systems. The idea is that any module will be able to be independently docked or undocked, so permitting rapid scaling and simplifying maintenance. Whilst deep space is cold, with an average temperature of about 2.7 Kelvin or minus 270 degrees Celsius, satellites in low Earth orbit experience temperatures of between minus 65 and 125 degrees Celsius as they go in and out of sunlight. And the solar cells in an orbital data centre will have to be exposed to the sun. Since the conduction or convection of heat to the environment is not possible in space, StarCloud is developing a lightweight radiator with a very large area that will be able to dissipate gigawatts of thermal load towards deep space. StarCloud acknowledges that gigawatt-scale orbital data centres are amongst the most ambitious space projects of all time. However, it also believes that they are feasible, economically viable and necessary to realise the potential of AI. Other interesting players include Orbit's Edge, who are developing orbital edge computing, Skyloom, who develop and manufacture hardware for space-based optical networking, and Blue Origin Blue Ring, which, amongst other things, will offer in space computing capabilities. However, the final company I want to focus on here is Lone Star Data Holdings. Lone Star's intention is to provide resilience as a service by backing up premium data to an independent, space-based data storage and communications network. And it plans to achieve this by providing data storage on the Moon. Like StarCloud, Lone Star has a grand vision, but is, of necessity, starting small. On February 27, 2024, a Lone Star virtual data centre payload called Independence was successfully transported to the Moon. It travelled there as part of the IM-1 lunar lander from Intuitive Machines and was used to conduct a data storage test from a lunar surface. On February 26, 2025, the second Intuitive Machines lunar mission was launched. This carried a physical Lone Star Lunar Data Center payload called Freedom, which had a RISC-V CPU from Microchip and a Scion Pascari Enterprise SSD. On March 5th, Lone Star reported a successful test of the Freedom hardware whilst it was en route to the Moon, with this including the execution of file uploads, downloads, data encryption, and in-space data manipulation for commercial customers. On March 6th, the IM-2 lander touched down on the Moon. But sadly, like the earlier IM-1, it did not land in an upright position. This constrained surface operations to 12 hours, and, as far as I can find out, this did not allow for a test of a Lone Star Freedom Data Center on the lunar surface. But being a space pioneer is always risky, with lunar data centres a far more challenging technical proposition than those in Earth orbit. And we do at least know that there's now a RISC-V processor near the Moon's South Pole. In April 2024, Mark Zuckerberg suggested that AI is being held back by energy supply constraints that are limiting the size of new data centers. As we've seen in this video, one possible solution is to build vast solar-powered data centers in space with few constraints on their scale. Clearly, this would be a huge and very expensive undertaking. But the tech giants have got deep pockets and Amazon already has a foot in the game. Now, whether it would be wise to build vast AI clusters in space, we can all debate down in the comments. But it certainly looks to me at least to be a future technical possibility, and one in which the big tech giants may choose to invest. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.